Welcome to another video, in which I want to leave some words about the state of tanking jobs in Endwalker, according to the changes we could already witness inside of the media tour. And while potency changes are to be expected, and some details may be fine-tuned, we could already get a very good overall impression of the changes to come. So let us hop in and talk about the differences and similarities of all four tanks and what has changed from Shadowbringers. First of all, as a baseline, I would say that if you liked any of the tanks much more than others, you should definitely play that tank again, as Square have mostly refined signature abilities instead of reworking specific designs completely. For example, other tanks may gain timing defensive abilities now, like the Dark Knight's The Blackest Knight, but The Blackest Knight still keeps its distinctive factor of being a very powerful shield, depending on the target's HP pool. Or Paladins do still have their magical rotation, while Gunbreakers still feel fast paced and as if you play a DPS job with tanking capabilities. But there are certainly some advantages or disadvantages for each individual job, like self-sustain for example, especially in the form of self-healing capabilities. While offensive traits nearly stay within the spectrum of each individual tank, defensive cooldowns are getting closer and closer together, granting all three tanks Paladin, Warrior and Gunbreaker passive healing output that can be forced actively without sacrificing offensive uptime. Yes, the Paladin doesn't have to totally rely on Clemency anymore to push out healing. Now its offensive casts also work as small self-healing boosts, while Clemency still remains as the superior choice to avoid party death or to overcome last man standing situations effectively. On the other hand, it is not that strong anymore because of losing potency and the boost of Requiesca, which I think to be perfectly fine, we never needed the full single target healing potential of a healer, so give it back to where it's needed. The warrior will get an overhaul of its self-healing skill as well. While I'm not celebrating the change to Nascent Flash's inherent power to scale with damage dealt and heal the warrior for the same amount, which always had been super cool to pop that ability with big CDs or when making big AoE pulls, because now it grants a simple 400 cure potency baseline with each weapon skill. Yet, as someone pointed out in Xeno's breakdown video, we might still have the AoE bonus on that one, so warriors might be able to heal up themselves in big dungeon pools. But we will see. On the other hand, where there is shadow, there always has to be light, which is the newfound strength of raw intuition, receiving the nascent flash effect by being transformed into blood wedding. Not only reducing incoming damage by 10%, but also when timed correctly, following on the before mentioned timing skills, we get another 10% mitigation for 4 seconds plus a 30 second lasting shield equivalent to 400 cure potency. But all of this for the warrior itself, while Nascent Flash moves into the party support department. So if you're looking for the most consistent self healers, Paladin and Warrior are still the way to go, but I would say Paladin will become much more effective on that department with Endwalker than ever before. Still, the Gunbreaker is catching up as well with its powerful Heart of Corundrum, a defensive Pandora's box against all sorts of attacks and situations, while Aurora is upgraded into a two-stack design ability, for more flexibility to use it for yourself or your tanking partner. Dark Knight, yeah, as long as you're able to use the Blackest Knight properly or reclaim HP with Abyssal Drain in big dungeon pulls, there's definitely no need to fear the Reaper. It is just so sad that Living Dead still hasn't been updated and keeps bearing that burden of a downside none of the other oh shit buttons have. I really really hope for a last minute overhaul or something like the Monk rework we could bear witness to in patch 5.1 or finally in 5.4, so let us wish for a Living Dead change in Endwalker as well. But apart from Living Dead, the Darknet still has a lot of magical mitigation, good stuff against raid whites and still lacks some mitigation against big tank busters, which can still be compensated by keen usage of the Blackest Knight. So basically all stays the same on these aspects. Offensively, like I said, tanking jobs mostly stay in the same shape as before, just getting some quality of life changes or a brand new level 90 killer ability like Shadowbringer or Primal Rent, which looks absolutely stunning and seem to be a cool new addition to fit into the job's respective kits. Yes, Paladin and Gunbreaker get additions to their finisher arsenal as well. Nonetheless, while I basically had the same adjustment for Dark Knight's Delirium, I absolutely love the reduced cooldown for inner release, which finally puts the action back on stage much more frequently. Because this aspect was always a big bummer for me not to feel in love with our axe swinging Felcleaver. But that may change. Antwalker looks really promising for warriors so far. Their AoE clunkiness is getting cleaned up by changes to Storm's Eye, whose buff now can be applied by AoE skills as well, which makes AoE build-ups much more enjoyable and quick. 
So while the Dark Knight's heavy OGCD and clicky action-driven combat style stays the same from its core features, Gunbreaker gets one stack of cartridges more and a follow-up to Burst Strike, which actually is a really cool thing. And yeah, Paladin gets unlimited blade works. Still, the warrior may be the one job that gets changed most significantly and many of my personal issues with it are getting cut down more and more. Especially that Avival and Onslaught are not part of the inner release window and job gauge anymore, turning them into just another diversifying act to take care of waiting time while waiting for the bloody Felcleave action, which now finally has gotten a finisher highlight in the form of Primal Rend, that also deals damage to other enemies around your main target. And even when I'm not a Gunbreaker main and consider this tank as my yeah, least favorite in Shadowbringers, I know many of you love it and yes, I may actually do as well when looking at this mind-boggling double down ability. Holy Balam Garden, is this really 1200 potency with falling off AoE damage of only 20%? That could really make a difference in AoE optimization and just imagine that crit could easily step back into the recent damage pool of Shadowbringers. Nonetheless, Dark Knight just gains the ability Shadowbringer, so in all honesty, on this department you have to stick with what sounds best to you. I guess the final level 90 techniques of all four tanks sound breathtaking, and it should matter more than ever which of these jobs you really enjoy playing. So it may actually depend on this last and actually most important category. How well designed and shaped does each tank look in the upcoming expansion? Starting with the Let Down Edgelord. I am honestly a bit disappointed that they haven't fit Blood Weapon into the same space of rework like they did with Inner Release and Delirium, because now it feels even more out of place than ever before and forces Dark Knight players to skill speed builds and pixel perfect timings with that annoying ability again. And yes, Living Dead still seems to be much weaker than the other survival skills, but I will not give up hope for the final changes to do something with it. In the same way, I'm definitely going to level the Dark Knight as one of my first jobs because of the style and edginess. We had to become what we must, right? And I will not just change for fancy shiny armor on the moon. Ok, maybe I will. Which leads me to the Gunbreaker next. Like with Samurai and Red Mage seeing no significant changes to their kit and design in Shadowbringers, compared to the other jobs, it feels the same for the Gunbreaker now. Never change a running system, right? And as it had been a very popular choice among players in Shadowbringers, why changing it completely? Just add some big number potencies, another cartridge and voila. Squall is more ready than ever. And when looking at the warrior, I would say this could become the biggest adventure of tanking, because of so many changes, so many flaws getting cut down and quality of life becoming better than ever on fell cleaving ground. I'm really excited to test out the higher frequency of inner release windows and of course the amazing side effects of skill speed being removed from the warrior's menu, at least partially. But while all of this sounds amazing and with just a very minimal disappointment yet, I smell a serious amount of poster boy flavor when looking at the paladin. Not only for finally getting passive healing, but holy Sheltron, finally making the paladin use as its shield properly and making timing a thing, which always led me to favor the Dark Knight. And with Rick Rescat now being not dependent on remaining MP anymore, at least not that strictly, rotational freedom is restored as well. So for now and with the first glance, the Paladin could earn the truest kit of all and being the shining star of the expansion, with beautiful skill animations referring to the good old times of Final Fantasy Tactics, I mean who will not love some magical swords and confidios being thrown at all the moon monstrosities and against our beloved scythe wielding maniac. So fetch your steel plate moon boots from the basement and take up sword and shield against chaos and cosmos. Or just take any of the other tanks, there's definitely no wrong choice. Thank you for watching and until we meet on the moon, stay safe, stay in gravity and keep loving Final Fantasy. <laughs>